So we're ready for our next call. Uh, developing the prosody <coughs> XMPP server in Lua. Are you Matthew Watt? Hi. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, so my name is Matthew Wilde. Um, I'm the lead developer of the um, Prosody project, um, which I founded in 2008. It's uh, an XMPP server written in, in Lua. Um, before I go into Lua specifics, um, which is why we're here, I'll give you a bit of background about, about the Prosody project. Um, back in 2008, uh, I was working on developing a web application um, which had an XMPP backend. Um, in case anyone isn't familiar, XMPP is an open standard communication protocol that's used for instant messaging, but also machine-to-machine -machine communication, um, such as in the Internet of Things. Um, the, the prototype application I built fairly quickly. Um, it, was, uh, it was working great, and um, without getting into the details, it was, just, it was consuming a stream of messages that were coming in, about one per second. Um, and it was applying some logic and transformation, and then it was just displaying them in a, in a user interface. Um, but soon after the uh, prototype application was complete, I succeeded. It was like 3 a.m. in the morning. I went to bed, and I woke up in the morning, and it wasn't working anymore. And I realized the XMPP server that I was using had crashed. Um, and so I thought nothing more of it, and I restarted it. And then it happened again a bit later in the day, and I realized it was running out of memory. Um, and I had two users, not many messages, one message per second is not a lot of messages. Um, so I started looking for an alternative. Um, and over the course of a few days, I went through all the different servers. Um, each one had problems and um, failed in its own spectacular way. Um, each one a story of its own. Um, but. Uh, I, I went through them all and I was depressed for about a week before um, the idea of writing my own server gradually uh, crept up on me. So I just started to think, how hard could it possibly be? So way back in 2008, when the project started, um, a common question we got was, why Lua? Why on earth Lua? Um, and an obscure scripting language most people knew it only as the language uh, used to script World of Warcraft, um, the game. And developing an application, a whole application in Lua, and not embedding it inside an existing application was pretty unheard of. Um, especially a network server, it's supposed to perform well and um, uh, be light on resources and things. So we got a lot of funny looks and people saying, well, this is just a hobby server and, and so on. And um, Kind of at, at the beginning it was, um, but uh, it turned into much more than that. Um, I'd been using Lua already, to answer why Lua. Um, I'd been using it inside a, a, an XMPP bot framework uh, that I wrote in C++. Um, I was using C++ a lot at the time, but uh, I started to get frustrated um, with slow compilation times and uh, C++ telling me how to write my code and structure it and a tendency for the applications I wrote to just become very big very quickly, I felt needlessly. And so Lua Simplicity appealed to me um, quite a bit as it has to obviously many people. And um, But my primary reason for developing Lua was at the time rapid development. Uh, I felt that I could get something off the ground much more easily. Um, and I wasn't planning to spend years of my life working on a server, although that's exactly what did happen. Um, and I just wanted something that was simple, lightweight, and just worked uh, for what I was using it for. So the first worry that came to mind was the performance of a scripting language. Um, a scripting language is generally a category of language that um, you use to get things done, but not necessarily perform well. and uh, so it wasn't a natural choice, but um, I was joined when I started the project by a couple of friends from the XMPP community, and uh, one of them also saw the need for an XMPP server um, to be written, but he wanted to do it in C or C++ for performance reasons. So interfacing with C is one of the strong points, as a lot of you know, and um, so we struck a compromise. We'd write the server in Lua, 
And then one by one down the road, we would rewrite each module in C for performance, and then we'd have um, a working server. Um, that never happened. <laughs> Early on, we ran some benchmarks just out of curiosity to compare ourselves with the competition. And um, we were very close to eJabberD. Um, and that was the most popular server at the time. And uh, so, you know, we're developers. We're having a bit of fun. Optimize this, optimize that. How high can we get in the benchmark? And uh, soon enough, we were beating eJabberD by a small margin um, at, at this one particular benchmark. And yes, I know benchmarks aren't real world, um, but it was fun to see a scripting language succeed so favorably um, next to a, a server written in Erlang. So I thought about this, but when you consider that Lua is commonly used in games, um, often with code running many times between frames um, per second, um, maybe it's not so surprising after all. Um, games want a low latency garbage collector, for example, and so do real-time applications and, and servers. So it was a good fit from that regard. And games also want uh, low runtime overhead because they've got lots of other stuff they need to do. Servers that need to handle lots and lots of connections also need that kind of thing. Um, so it, it actually wasn't that surprising when, when you thought about it. So our biggest worry, performance, wasn't actually a problem. Um, the next big issue was Lua's ecosystem. Um, as many of you will know, Lua's standard library is very thin, and intentionally so. And we knew that depending on a lot of third-party modules would be the natural cost. Um, but modules were a relatively late addition in, in Lua's history, and uh, with the Lua community skewed towards um, embedding into applications that have existing APIs, there wasn't much call for developing out external third-party modules. Um, there were some, but um, it just wasn't generally the way that Lua code tended to be written. And um, you had a kind of chicken and egg effect with you know, not enough modules meant people just stuck to embedding and not writing whole applications in, in just Lua. Um, and then because of that, no one wrote modules because they didn't need them. Uh, so Bosdy's primary dependencies were uh, our Lua socket, um, which we use for networking. It's not part of the C standard, and so Lua doesn't include it by default. Um, Lua expat is a streaming XML parser. It's pretty lightweight. And um, Lua sec, which is a, a wrapper around OpenSSL. And uh, we use that for SSL TLS encrypted connections. Uh, we had to fork every one of these at some point in the project history. Um, we had to implement IPv6 in Lua socket. Um, it wasn't on GitHub at the time even. We just had to take the code. Um, we added IPv6, and we tried to get it merged, but it was too slow. We had our own release cycles to meet, and so we just released Lua Socket Prosody. And very original name, but always with the goal of getting it merged eventually, and eventually we did. Um, Lua Sec, a security library encryption, didn't support certificate verification. Um, it didn't support certificate verification. Um, and so we, we could connect to a server and we could encrypt our connection, but we had no idea if we were talking to the NSA or to the person we really wanted to talk to. And so it was pretty bad. Um, so we implemented that as well, um, so you could get details of the certificate that you were connecting to and uh, match it up with who you expected to be connecting to. Um, Lua Expat, we uh, didn't really need more features or improvements, but um, it was a, a wrapper around the expat API of the underlying C library, and we needed uh, over the course of time to expose more of expat's API for security reasons, for example, um, so we could put a limit on how far it was willing to parse uh, of the stream so we didn't just end up using loads of memory and things. We needed those callbacks in there. Um, I still maintain uh, Lua expat because no one else wants to. It was unmaintained for years since uh, the demise of the Kepler project. and. Um, and so I haven't made a release because I'm, I'm working on Prosody. Um, and so it's not that I'm maintaining it by choice. I feel like it could have a more active um, maintainership. But uh, there we go. Later on, we added support for SQL databases. Um, 
only at the time Lua DBI uh, supported multiple databases. We wanted to support um, a range of them pretty simply um, with prepared statements. So Lua SQL was quite popular, um, but it only supported prepared statements through a, a totally undocumented API and that only worked with some of the supported backends. And um, so if you wanted it to be portable, you had to rely on string concatenation in SQL statements. And that was just not going to happen. <laughs> Um, so things are much better today. Um, Lua rocks obviously happened, and that's been a massive change in in how the Lua community is, is structured. And um, it's it's really a lot different now when when we have so many modules easily available to users. And uh, Prosody is very plugin based, which means what we depend on in Prosody itself you can start enabling plugins that depend on other modules. And if those modules aren't available on the system, then the user has to go and compile those. Um, edit the make file is most Lua um, old timers know. And, um, and then compile from source. Um, Lua Rocks changes all that. And it's cross-platform, which is great. Um, I'd still like to see more collaborative maintenance of the core libraries. Um, Lua Socket is obviously a big one. Um, I think they're just too important to the community to rely on a single individual spare time. Um, I know there's some arguments against picking a, a blessed set of modules, but I don't see it like that. I, I think just if a group of people want these modules to, to work, then um, we need to move to a more collaborative maintainership. And Diego, current maintainer of Lua Socket, um, wants someone else to maintain it. So it's, it's probably going to happen, and I know there's been a lot of talk about that. Um, but I think it's something we really need to really need to work on. Um, I want to get Lua Expat off my conscience. Um, so the other worry that's often raised, um, do we suffer from a lack of contributions because Prosody is not written in popular language, JavaScript, PHP, Python, whatever, um, or something everyone knows? Um, Lua has been a pretty obscure language to a lot of people, but it's also a really simple language. Um, I think it's a lot more popular now than it was in 2008. Um, but uh, I'd say the answer to that, to that question is quite the opposite. Um, we've had a few people come along and say, well, you know, I don't really know Lua, so I can't contribute. But we've had far more people come along and, and just write code. And they pick Lua up, they pick up what they need um, really easily. The manual's pretty good for that. Programming in Lua is good for that, and it's accessible. Um, and they, they just contribute entire plugins sometimes um, that implemented the feature they wanted. And some of them weren't even programmers. It's, you know, it's, it was really good to see that happen and the first time it happened, because that's the kind of environment I was trying to create. Originally, I was intending for programmers, obviously, but um, the fact that someone could just pick up Prosody and, and extend it the way they wanted um, was great. Obviously, the code wasn't great um, in all cases, um, but you know that's not that's not uh, the point. Um, our, our first plugin, for example, translated everyone's messages to uh, Swedish, Swedish chef, Swedish from the Muppets, uh, which was a lot of fun. Um, so the fun parts, um, not as fun as that, but um, using Lua gave us some features that not all languages have so readily available. You can do most things in most languages, but um, Lua really has these built in. So some interesting things to the Posity project. We, um, we define a meta table for all functions, and that means that when you call toString on a function, it tells you where it was defined instead of giving you some ad obscure address, um, which is really great for debugging. Um, we also allow indexing the function so that you can look at up values inside a closure and use it just like a table. Um, again, that's really good for debugging. And, um, and occasionally monkey patching and hacks of all sorts. Um, we can also restrict the global environment. Um, Prosody, by default, uh, enforces a clean global, envi global environment. Um, it, it does set some stuff, but um, modules run in a sandbox uh, so that um, they can't clobber each other's data and things. 
that could actually be quite dangerous in, in our kind of server because um, you could end up leaking data between different user sessions and that can become a security problem. So um, we set a meta table and prevent uh, setting globals unless you go through a special procedure to set it. And, uh, and that's caught a lot of mistakes, you know, just innocent mistakes that wouldn't have been caught without hitting an actual bug in, in live servers. Um, so the other interesting thing we did was cr we created a Telnet console. So when you're running a Prosody instance, you can actually Telnet into the server and you can actually request any variable, run any function, or just poke around. And you can even re redefine functions. And um, it's really great for debugging. And yes, it has been used to hotfix production systems before. Um, it was inevitable. Um, we're also working on adopting uh, Lua check as part of our workflow. Um, and currently, that produces a load of false alarms, um, a load of warnings on completely innocent code. Um, sometimes it's code that could be cleaned up. Sometimes it's code that is actually fine. We just put an annotation in there. But having code that will run through Lua check cleanly means we can catch a lot of bugs before they happen. And, um, and Lua inspect is also useful in that regard. We use that some time before as well. And, uh, and that was useful. So a bit about our code. Um, we, Presidy's code is split into four main sections. Um, core is where we put pretty much all the Presidy specific business logic um, and uh, stuff that really isn't useful anywhere else. Net um, involves all our network level handling. Um, and that actually provides quite a nice library for um, implementing various protocols. Asynchronous I.O., um, optionally using libevent um, via the Lua event binding, and, uh, and also experimentally, experimentally CQs as well. Um, it has implementations of different protocols, such as HTTP and WebSocket on the client and server side. Um, plugins is prosody specific plugins um, that we supply some, and also um, users contribute often. And uh, you, they can either be bundled with Prosody, and you can also install them, or install them separately. And they're pretty specific to Prosody. Um, we have a defined API, and uh, we run each one in a self-contained sandbox. Also, if you're hosting multiple hosts, multiple virtual hosts in, in XMPP, then um, each host will get its own copy of the module. Um, but we can still share code and things between them, but not the data, which is really useful. Um, the util directory, we throw in loads of stuff um, that is just used by the other code. And mostly this is things like um, data structures that we find useful, um, also algorithms and things. For example, um, off the top of my head, selecting an, adre an, a, an outgoing address when we want to connect to a server, and we've got to choose between multiple IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. That's all defined in, our, in an RFC, so we just have this util library to implement that. And we can just shove all the addresses in there, and it will say, use this one. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in there that um, util and in, in the net directory that we think would apply outside of Prosody. And we've been trying to keep it cleanly separated. Um, and we'd like to work towards releasing those somehow, probably Lua rocks now that that makes it so easy. Um, and that would be nice to see. We just want to do it in a way that doesn't take away from uh, Prosody development time. And also, that you have the question of where we're going to uh, maintain these and things. So that's something we want to work towards. Um, but uh, if anyone pokes around there and sees something useful that you want us to release, then shout out, because it might encourage us to uh, look more into it. Um, Luigit, I have to say a word about. Um, it's an amazing technological achievement, and uh, it does make some difference to our benchmarks in throughput. Um, it's FFI also allows us to quickly write bindings to libraries and things that we and system platforms that we uh, platform APIs that we don't um, have immediate access to without having to compile any code. Um, it's quite useful, but overall, we haven't found it a good fit for Prosody um, on production systems, at least. FFI code is tends to be more dangerous to run. It's more prone to crashing the server um, if something goes wrong um, than just pure Lua code. Um, but also a big problem, Luajit has a one gigabyte memory cap. And Prosody just 
doesn't use much CPU, um, but it uses a lot of RAM when you have lots of people connected. So you want to, you, your server is always going to max out on RAM before it maxes out on CPU. You want to handle hundreds of thousands of connections. You cannot do that in one gigabyte. You want to scale as high as your hardware wants to go. Um, so just those things combined, we decided just to focus on standard Lua. Um, speaking of memory usage, like standard Lua has been great. Uh, string interning has really been helpful. Um, we uh, we find it helps with memory usage and also with speeding up. We have a lot of short strings um, in XMPP that we need to uh, compare and such. So um, the only place it is a pain is in um, our network buffers and things where we're handling just arbitrary data from the network. Uh, that's something we're hoping Lua 5.2 will resolve, um, which we haven't yet moved to. Um, thinking about the future, what would we change? The answer is not a lot. Um, I'm quite happy with our choice of language, and I think the benefits of using Lua have outweighed um, all the problems we've had. Um, they've been minor in comparison. It's been quite a breeze. Um, there are some Lua-related changes on our roadmap. For example, chasing interpreter versions. As I mentioned, we're not yet on 5.2. Um, it's been difficult. I know Lua doesn't release that often, um, but Migrating a large code base, we used the module function in basically every single file, and moving all that over to 5.2 hasn't been easy. We relied on it in some places. Um, things like just our tests uh, relied on using module for sandboxing and things. We can port all that over, but then we had the conundrum of do we support 5.2 or 5.1, or do we support both? If we support only 5.2, then we don't work on Lua JIT. Um, all these things had to be answered, so we're, we're gradually moving to 5.2. We're probably, because of the issues I mentioned, not going to worry too much about Luigic compatibility. Um, and uh, the only other change that, that's important is we want to move away from using the standard Lua interpreter to uh, execute Prosody. Prosody's main script is just a Lua script, and you just run it with Lua 5.1, but in top, HTOP and PS, you just appear as Lua 5.1, which isn't very useful to sysadmins. Um, so we're planning to use a, a C binary that links with the Lua library, um, and we'll probably move some things in there, like our privilege dropping code, so it's more easily auditable, um, because doing that kind of thing in a high-level level language is often a mistake. Um, I will stop there, because I'm pretty much out of time, but that's, that's basically it. Um, any questions? Okay. Thank you.